All right. Um, so onto a new, a whole new topic, and that is medical emergencies. Medical emergencies require you to be a detective because there's a lot of things that go on uh, medicine wise on the human body. For example, nausea and vomiting. You find that with pretty much any medical emergency. So some just because someone is a is having nausea or has been vomiting doesn't mean that it's just that. There could be other things going on. They could be having a heart attack. They could be having an abdominal issue. They could be having uh, cholecystitis. They could have appendicitis. They could have uh, uh, bowel obstruction, kind of. Um, they might not be able to go to the bathroom at all as well. Uh, so there's a lot of different possibilities. So we have to be a detective. We have to really start looking for a cause, and then we go down the path that the answers are taking us down. Now, I gave you guys a handout, the pertinent questions uh, handout, that talks about OPQRST and other things like last bowel movement, what you ha have you eaten, anything greasy, um, do you have an EpiPen, have you used it, do you take albuterol, have you used it, how do you feel afterwards? So there's a lot of questions to ask. Um, one more example is abdominal pain. When you have a woman of childbearing age complaining of abdominal pain, there are thousands of possibilities. And so try to figure out exactly what's going on, or at least try to get a, a basic idea of what's going on and what questions you need to ask. So you really have to be a detective. So, uh, we break it down today and, to, and Wednesday. It's not too bad. It's a single emergency. Even on Friday, it's a single emergency. However, there's a lot of different sub-issues with each one of those. Okay? So respiratory emergencies is the first topic, chapter 16. And the good thing is we've talked a lot about respiratory emergencies already. We've talked about how we breathe, why we breathe. We've talked about the structures involved with breathing, the muscles, the accessory muscles. We've talked about uh, normal breathing, abnormal breathing. And we've talked a little bit about some of the respiratory emergencies. So here we're gonna kind of put it all together. Now, the thing about respiratory emergencies and treatment, it's more of the treatment. I get a lot of students that ask me, Lou, I'm really concerned. How much oxygen do I give them? And, and actually, really, with any medical emergency, how much oxygen do I give them? Well, the answer is simple. Respiratory emergencies, what are they needing? Oxygen. Oxygen. So guess what? We can give them a lot of oxygen. Okay? We can give them a lot of oxygen. And so, that's what we do. Chest pain, that's a whole other story, and we'll talk about it on Wednesday. But for now, um, they need oxygen, so that's what we're going to do. So. Okay. All right. So. So, Mr. Dillon, let's start off with you. So, give me the structures of the upper airway. Um, the larynx, pretty much the throat, the mouth, and yeah, that's pretty much it, right? Nope. What, what did you want? 
the structures of the upper airway. The pharynx and the nasal cavities. The nasal cavity, okay, the so the nose. The, oh. the nostril, the mouth. The what, I'm sorry? The trachea. That's more lower airway. The, the throat, the nasal cavity, the nostril, and the mouth. How about the nasal and oral pharynx? That's what I said. Well, okay, I'm sorry that I misunderstood. I'm sorry. Okay. My pronunciation. <laughs> okay, and then what are the lower airway structures? The lungs, the primary bronchi, and the trachea. Okay. What about the alveoli and the bronchioles? Yes. All right, so we know the structures. Now, yes. Carlos, so talk to me about taking a breath. Mm. Well, you do it to get oxygen. Um, it's uh, the movement of the diaphragm. Okay, what happens to the diaphragm? Uh, they, it contracts during inhalation. Okay, it contracts. Mm -hmm. It moves upward. And the, the ribs move downward. <laughs> okay, but, all right, so back it up. So the diaphragm contracts, and how do the ribs move downward? Through negative pressure? Okay, so negative pressure is created within the chest. Mm -hmm. But how did the how did the ribs expand? Well, it's the lower portion on uh, let me think. Uh, so the diaphragm moves slightly downward clearing the lower portion of the rib cage which moves upward and outward okay so it's the intercostal muscles that are contracting yes and the diaphragm contracting or it's the intercostals and the and the diaphragm contracting mm -hmm. expanding the chest and creating that negative pressure so the air enters into the lungs yes. and so santana what happens in the exhalation component of it So when, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so whenever you are exhaling, the diaphragm is going to relax and the intercostal muscles are going to relax. So the diaphragm is going to move upwards. And that once negative pressure inside the lungs now becomes positive and the negative pressure is now on the outside. Okay, good. All right, so Ms. Kayla. So talk to me about adequate normal breathing. Like tidal volume? Okay, how much tidal volume should we be inhaling? 500. Okay, good, 500 cc's. Now, give me some characteristics of normal breathing. Uh, equal. Rise and fall of the chest. Okay, good. Um, oh, like their rate, <laughs> making sure it's uh, between like 12 and 20. Okay, good. Adequate rate, total. Do you have to work to breathe? No, shouldn't have to. Correct. 
Yes. Now we, we still expend energy, but so that technically is a definition of work. But as far as putting forth a strong effort, it's not necessary, correct? Correct. Okay. What else? Uh, well, outside of a great rhythm and quality, equal rise and fall of the chest. I'm not sure what you're looking for. I am looking for, is it noisy or quiet? Oh, quiet. Okay. It should be for eight to twenty four breaths per minute, right? Right. What was that, Vanessa? It should be eight to twenty four breaths per minute. Yeah, but remember the normal rate is 12 to 20. So we'd rather see that than eight to 24. But I know there was a question somewhere where it said eight to 24. Um, okay, so it's effortless, it's quiet. We have adequate tidal volume, adequate rate. Um, what should lung sounds sound like? Clear. 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 Should we be using abnormal or should we be using accessory muscles to breathe? No. 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 What are the usual accessory muscles that are used when a person's having a hard time breathing? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? <laughs> what muscles, what accessory muscles are we going to see when a patient is having difficulty breathing? The abdomen. Okay, what else? Stern, sternocloid muscles. Stern Sternocleidal mastoid. Yes. Good chest. So if the person is, is ventilating adequately, what is the definition of ventilation? The movement of air in and out the lungs. Okay. How is that different from respiration? Sorry, what was that? Sorry, um. Oh, just want to make sure I don't that that I catch everybody talking. Respiration is actual gas exchange. There you go. Okay, so respiration is the actual exchange of gases. How many different types of respiration are there? And what are there? Internal respiration. And? External. External. And external. What's the difference? Ms. Valeria, what's the difference between an internal and external respiration? You're not going to get away from me. I see you right there.
It's taking you way back a year ago, isn't it? I know. Isn't the internal, like when the gas exchange takes place in the um, ovuli? No. No? It's the opposite. External respiration is exchange gases at the alveolar level. And the internal takes the gas exchange in the cellular level? There you go. Internal respiration is exchange of gases at the cellular level. All right, good. So with abnormal breathing, we know that it's going to be noisy. We know that the patient has poor effort, that they're working to breathe, they're using accessory muscles. Um, what can cause a person not to be able to uh, decrease or not be able to get a oxygen for internal, I'm sorry, for external respiration. So if you think about it, does oxygen diffuse through fluid? No. 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 So that's one. And it could be blood, it could be pus, but any type of fluid, oxygen cannot diffuse through that. Number two, if there's anything affecting the blood vessels or even the lack of blood going out of the ventricle, the right ventricle into the lungs, is going to cause poor perfusion. Okay. Okay. All right. So I have respiratory distress. <sighs> I'm grunting, kind of, sort of. And Brisa listens to my lungs and she discovers crackles. So, Ms. Brisa, what are crackles? Um, I'm not too sure, but it's like the sound like me when there's fluid. There you go. That indicates fluid in the lung. Okay. What condition can cause crackles? What well, medical condition? Pneumonia. Nope, not pneumonia. Arthritis? Ms. Brisa, what would you say? I didn't, I didn't know. I know somebody else, but I just wanted to make sure what I heard. Which <clears throat> can I answer? Sure. Excessive fluid in the lungs. Well, okay. Excess in the lungs. Okay, but what's causing that excessive fluid in the lungs? You're right. It, it's it's fluid in the lungs. But what's causing that fluid in the lungs? Inflammation? Infection, pneumonia, or something like that? Well, pneumonia is going to be different. Yes, ma'am. Pulmonary edema? Okay, that's what it is. It's called pulmonary edema. But what's going to be causing it? The excess fluid. Okay, but what medical condition? Is it bronchitis? No, bronchitis and pneumonia can cause bronchi. CHF? Uh, yes, congestive heart failure is going to cause crackles because remember blood is backing up into from the left ventricle to the left atrium and into the lungs because the left ventricle is not effective at pumping right now okay um so 
have any of you ever gotten a straw and put it inside a cup of water or glass of soda or something? Of something course, so liquid, everybody. And then you blew into that straw? So somebody said everybody? Yep. Okay. And what did it sound like? Bubbles. Bubbling. So what do you think crackles sound like? Like bubble. Bubble. Like bubbling. Bubbling. Yep. So that's exactly what they sound like. Um, um, when you hear them, my question is like, when you are already listening to the bubbles, is that already uh, something to be very worried about? Or is it like, how can I explain it? Is it very, very does it have to be severe or how can I explain? Um, at the point of hearing the crackles, is that already a severe point of having too much fluid? Or is, it can just be a still a minor fluid in the lungs. Does that make sense? Run that by me again. Okay. So at the point you're listening the crackles, is that already a severe situation? Yeah, because remember, oxygen doesn't diffuse through that fluid. In other words, it can't get through. It's in there. But you have mm -hmm. to remember, we're not fish to be able to pull that that oxygen out of that fluid. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, it's like okay. you're trying to breathe underwater without, without a snorkel or without the scuba gear. You're going to drown. Now, oh. unless you're Aquaman or I'm Aquaman, the last time I checked... The girls oh, okay. don't think I'm Aquaman, so I'm not Aquaman. So I can't breathe underwater. So at that point, it would be a load and go. I, not necessarily load and go, but it's they're having difficulty breathing, and so I would, I would either get out of there quick or or get the paramedics to get there. Like I actually had my boss with crackles a couple months ago, and I gave her medicine to help get rid of excess fluid. And uh, she was able to breathe better after that. Now that fluid, though, they have to pee it out, so they they get the urge to to pee it out. Okay. So let me let me go over a couple. Let me, actually, let me go over crackles. Actually, before I do that, uh, so let's talk about the next one, which is ronchi. So I'm gonna pick on somebody that's not on camera. So, Cecilia. So, talk to me about Ronkai. About what? Ronkai. So, here I am. <laughs> and I got a fever. I don't have the, I don't have the Rona. But I've been coughing up a lot. I can barely breathe, catch my breath. Oh, I'm warm. My forehead's warm. So you listen to my lungs. What do you what are you what do you expect to find? Okay, narrow narrow airways or bronchioles. Okay. But what sound would you expect to hear? Everybody was talking about it a little bit ago. The crackle noise? Well, not crackles, but yeah, it's something similar. Sonia, what was there? What was everybody mentioning a minute ago? For a long time. Oh, crackles. 
No, it wasn't Crackles. Crackles was a pulmonary edema. Is it snoring? Nope. That's not upper airway noise. Is it like congestion? Okay, it's okay. Gonna, yeah. First thing will be congested. I have oh. mucus in there. Um, what was that, Joanna? It has mucus. Uh huh. So it's like core. It's like rattle me noises, like the coarse crackle. Yeah. What do we call that lung sound? Everybody was saying it before. Pneumonia. Okay. It's it's associated with pneumonia and bronchitis. So would you say, Sonia? I'm sorry, go ahead. Emphysema? Uh, no, I said nope. All right, Miss Vivian, what do you say? What say you? What say you, Miss Vivian? Interesting. All right, how about Ronkai? Is it going to be wheezing? Ronkai. Ronkai is that rattling noise indicative of pneumonia and bronchitis. It's more Which of a popping sound. I'm sorry, what was that? The actual noise is called Ronkai? Yeah, Ronkai. Okay. R H O N C H I. Did you say it sounds like popping? Yeah. Okay. So now, <laughs> mm, mm, what's that? Wheezing. Okay, what's in the, that in, indicative of? That's in the lower airway, respiratory, and that's like asthma, pneumonia, bronchitis. Car construction. All right. So now, Marisela, tell me what's happening with wheezes. And I know it's a high pitched whistling sound, but what's causing that wheezing? Uh, Isn't it like constriction? I'm sorry, what was that, Sonia? Isn't it like constriction? Like in the uh, airway? What part of the airway? The, the bronchi? Trachea? Nope. And not bronchi? Bronchial. The lower airway? Who's? Okay, like, yeah, it's the lower airway, but specifically what part of it? You're right. You're right. Um, somebody said bronchial. Who said bronchial? Me, Joanna. <laughs> Man, everybody right away is like, me. I was like, oh, okay. Ooh, heart attack. Help, I need help. So, yeah, specifically the bronchioles. And what happens is because those bronchioles are constricted with mucus, uh, mucus plugs, and also the bronchial constriction, um, just everybody put uh, purse your lips. Mm. 
Like you're, y'all aren't gonna kiss me. No, just kidding. Now blow air through that. What happens? Your lips start to get bigger. I can't whistle anymore. Can you hear the whistle? That's what wheezing is. Your bronchioles are constricted and air is getting pushed through there. Now, what you will see with an asthmatic patient and wheezing is, actually, let me ask you, are they going to be inhaling longer or exhaling longer? Exhaling. So Valeria says exhaling. And Jose says inhaling. Jose, why inhaling? Because you're trying to get in all the air? Never mind. I second guess myself. What was your first guess? Was inhaling your first guess or second guess? It was my first guess. But I heard the question wrong, my bad. Okay. So, yeah, they're, they are trying to get air in, but what drives us to breathe? The carbonic drive. The carbonic drive, which says what? What is the carbonic drive? Expelling the carbon dioxide. Run that by me again. We're expelling the carbon dioxide. Well, that's what we're doing, but, and yeah, we expel carbon dioxide, but really what is the carbonic drive? Are you looking for chemoreceptors? Like, well, the chemoreceptors are gonna detect the carbon yeah, dioxide sure. level and oxygen level too, but our carbonic drive says, and that's what drives us to breathe, actually an elevated carbon dioxide level. So the carbonic drive says that when the carbon dioxide levels are increased, we breathe what? Faster. Faster to expel the excess CO2, correct? So because of the bronchial constriction, our bronchioles being small, are we trapping carbon dioxide? So yes. th does the body want to help push out that extra carbon dioxide? Yes. And so is the exhalation going to be longer than an inhalation? Yes, to help expel the, the excess CO2. <sighs> okay. All right. So let me play this for you. All right. So. Let's start out with the last one, somewhere. All right, here's wheezes. Let me know if you could hear it. Can you hear it? Yes. 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 Hear the high pitched noise? You hear the high pitched noise? Yes. 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 Okay. Did you hear the exhalation? Was it longer than the inhalation? Can you play it again? Can you play it again? In? Out. In, out. Now here's that half speed so you get to kind of hear a little bit better. You 
you hear that? Yeah. And if you're looking at my screen, this little blip that's inhalation and this longer blip is the exhalation. See the difference? That's a half speed, normal speed. Okay, you heard that? Okay, so the next one, here's even an expiratory wheeze. the short inspiration and long expiration and then you hear that high pitched noise in the expiration which okay, so one, those, which that, that, what was that what lung, lung, was that? lung was that? that's a expiratory wheeze it's still that high pitched whistle If you hear the inhalation, it sounds normal. It's the exhalation that sounds abnormal. Let's see if I can find a normal. for the normal. Oh, here we go. Is that what I was looking for? Is that on the bottom? It's in mom. You hear that smooth airflow? So that's your comparison. So again, if we go back to the bronch, uh, the wheezes. So it's like a whale trying to mate. Notice the difference? Okay. Next one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Ronkai. See if I find another Ronkai. No. Did you hear that? Yes. yes. Oh. A little difficult. Now hear your crackles. Mm 
Hear the bubbling? So that was a half speed, normal speed. Okay. That help. Yes. All right. I'll make lung sound listening fools out of you yet. So, lung sounds. It's important to listen to a patient's lung sounds because that can give us an idea of what's going on with the patient. They have respiratory distress. They're, in other words, they're having a hard time breathing. It might not be that bad. It might, they might, oh, man, I feel a little short of breath. Can't catch my breath. Okay. Well, let's listen to the lungs or let's listen to the lung sounds and see if there's a reason why they are that way. Okay. So. So what's the difference between hypoxia and hypoxemia? Hypoxia. It's low oxygen, like it's low oxygen blood. Where? I don't know. In the, the blood. blood. In the blood. Remember, the emia means blood. So hypox, low oxygen level, emia in the blood. And then hyper, it's high. Correct. Hyperoxemia, high oxygen level in the blood. So how is hypoxemia different than hypoxia? What was the question? How is hypoxia different than hypoxemia? Hypoxia is a... Uh... Low oxygen in the tissues. Good. Hypoxia, or hypoxia is low oxygen level at the cellular level or at the tissue level, but usually the cellular level. Because remember, that's where the exchange of gas is occurring in order to give the cell the oxygen that it needs to produce energy, to have metabolism. Now, if the person's hypoxic or hypoxemia, what happens to that metabolism? It becomes anaerobic. anaerobic. Good. Who was the one before Vanessa? It was a male voice. Uh, me. Jonathan. Okay. Good job, Jonathan. Good job, Vanessa, too. Man, Jonathan is woken up. Yay, Jonathan. Ah. <sighs> Now, respiratory distress, shortness of breath, whatever you want to call it. Is it always a respiratory issue that's happening? No. No. It could be injuries to the head, injuries to the abdomen, injuries to the ribs. So, INUS hits uh, 
Carlos in the ribs with a baseball bat. He was asking for it, right, Ina? What was that? I said you just hit Carlos with a baseball bat in, in the ribs because he was asking for it. Okay. He asked for it? Yeah? Yeah, that's why you hit him. You wouldn't hit him for no reason. Uh, no. I hope not. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Huh. What did you do, again? Carlos? Ease. I'm good boy. I don't know. That's not what I've heard. <laughs> so, and I think I've done this with you, right? We hit Jose in the chest instead? Oh, we hit Jose all the time. I know. Jose is always getting broken. He's <laughs> beaming him. Oh, he muted himself. <laughs> <laughs> so if you remember i know so you hit carlos in the chest with that baseball okay. Bat. Okay. so what is he going to experience as a result of that trauma to his chest pain pain with uh do i see am i gonna say this right is it shortness of breath or yes ma'am able to breathe um, yes shortness of breath why is he having shortness of breath because i just hit him okay causing what uh, so he's short of breath because you hit him but why is he not able to take a breath i'm sorry let me rephrase that why is he having difficulty breathing I just knocked all his air out. Okay, besides that. So you did that too. It could the be uh gonna be able to expand. Pain? Uh, well it could be is it pain like on the muscles or something? Like is Correct. It and somebody was mentioning it, he won't be able to fully expand his chest, right? Because he's yeah. pain. So what's going to happen as a result of him not being able to fully expand his chest? A mechanical disruption? Speak English to me. You're right, but speak English to me. Um, like he physically can't move his chest muscle, which he can't um, help. Like oh, he can, but he, he, he can't breathe. <laughs> His chest won't rise and fall adequately. Why? She broke something. Right. So, Anna, let's go back to you. Okay. So, he said it was a mechanical issue. Mm -hmm. How so? Why is it a mechanical issue? In other words, because he can't speak English. What did he mean with that mechanical issue? Can you... Uh, uh, it was Carlos. Carlos, ¿qué dijiste? Uh, mechanical disruption to the airway, uh, page 476, FYI. I can hear you. Mechanical disruption to the airway, page 476. Whoa, that sounds really... Uh, Pretty? Yeah. <laughs> but... Well, pretty much what I said. No, I mean, like he had, uh, I don't, I don't want to use blunt force trauma to the chest, uh, but uh, he had like trauma to the chest, which made his, I don't know, uh, I don't know, everything more tender. Okay. As he inhales and as he tries to like breathe in, like, you know, our chest moves, like it contracts. No, it expands. It expands. When we breathe Hold in, on, it expands. I'm in. Don't when you breathe in, it goes small, and then when you breathe out, it expands, right? No, when you breathe in, it expands. When you breathe out, it contracts. Ah. Well. It gets smaller. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. 
you know? Okay, you're you're dancing around it. You've you've used some very good words that I want to hear. But um can you like ask the question in like a different Okay. So way? All right, so you just hit me in the ribs. Yes. With a baseball bat. So I can't take a full breath because you hit me. Okay. So how come I can't take a full breath? And you said tender. What does that mean? Uh, um, Can you see me on camera? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So. Uh, 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 oh, that hurts. Okay. So what did I just show you? Discomfort. In what? Uh, in your chest. Okay. So in other words, it hurts for me to take a breath. Correct. So tender, that's why I like the word. I just wanted to hear you define it, which means oh. painful. Painful, yes, sir. So that area that you hit me hurts. So as I take a breath, all of a sudden that pain kicks in. So I'm going to take shallow breaths because I can't take a full deep breath because it, hurt, it hurts too much. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, sir. And so now what's happening to my oxygen level? It's going to drop. And what's going to happen to my carbon dioxide level? It's going to increase. It's going to increase. Okay. So I think somebody else said that before you. So, okay, yeah. good. So for the both of you, good. So my carbon dioxide level is going to increase. So therefore, what's going to happen to my respiratory rate? It's, it's not going to decrease. It's going to get faster. Yeah, it's going to increase because I'm building up carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. So my respirations are going to be rapid and shallow, correct? Correct. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So am I like explaining things better today? Yes, way better. Okay, all right. So what other things, and we've talked about a bunch of them, and I've talked about this before. If a person can't breathe adequately, what are you going to see them go through as a result of them not being able to breathe adequately? So we just mentioned a couple of them. Like, um, what? how are they going to act because they can't breathe? No, Is what are you going to see as far as the signs and symptoms? Oh, well. Respiratory rate, it, it goes up. Okay, increased respiratory rate, right? Because remember, the body's needing oxygen, it's building carbon dioxide. So the yes. respiratory rate is going to increase. What's going to happen to the heart rate? Uh, it's going to pump faster. Yeah, increase. It's going to increase. All right. Vivian, give me something else. Vivian, give me something else. Oh, says, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want Vivian to answer. No, hold on. Her mic's not working, sir. Yeah, I know. I, I just got the message. Oh, okay. <laughs> or you can type the answer, Vivian. Hyperventilation. That's what she put. Okay, so rapid breathing. All right. Uh, Alexia, let's go with you. Give me another one. Can you repeat the whole question, please? 
the question is, give me some signs and symptoms that you will see on a patient that is experiencing shortness of breath or what we call respiratory distress. So we've talked about rapid respirations, rapid heart rate. What else? Would the skin color change? To what? Yes, to what? Cyanosis. Uh, okay, so they might turn blue. Understand that cyanosis is a late sign. So we, if you show up on scene and that person is as blue as a Smurf, they've been that way a while. Or they've been having a hard time breathing for a while. Okay. I haven't seen Smurfs since the sec the sequel came out. I think they did a sequel. So it's been a few years. And before that, it was in the 80s, Saturday morning cartoons. All right. So cyanosis, good. Uh, somebody else. Miss Kayla, give me another one. Um, you could see like retractions. Like what kind of retractions? Like when they're breathing more with their with their um, accessory muscles. So maybe like you'll see the um, chest will look like more sunken in when they breathe. Okay, so we will get the we'll get the uh, the accessory muscle use, yes. And then with retractions, so the sternum is going to sink. However, are we going to see that with adults? No, it's more in kids. Exactly. And why is that? Do you know? I think it's because their accessory muscles are not as built up as ours. Yeah, their, their breathing muscles are not as built up. And also their bone is, is very pliable. It hasn't fully solidified yet. It's still a lot of cartilage. So, yes, because of the increased pressures, that, that sternum will sink in. All right, good. Very good. Okay, um, Dylan, so you've been quiet for a while. Uh -huh. I have a question. What yes. about like, um, like, I like, um, gasping re respiration? Like, would that be the same thing as like the hyperventilating? Which respirations? I'm sorry, the gas gasping. gasping? Respiration? Yeah. Uh, no, but gasping is you're kind of like either taking a breath or you're talking about like agonal respirations, like in the CPR video. Yeah, like ag agonal respiration. Agonal. Okay. Um, let me give you an example of, or let me let me give you an analogy of gasping or agonal respirations. Has any of you? I, I see Jose saying me or Carlos saying me. Have any of you like run out of gas? And your car starts sputtering before it turns off? All the time. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> it happened, though. So, you know, it was just those last bits of sputtering before the car gave out, right? Uh huh. Oh, so okay. That's what agonal respirations are. It's just the last couple breaths before breathing stops in a person. It's like the view, oh. view, last view. Exactly, exactly. You're just about to run out, nothing left, and you just got the last couple. Puh, 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 puh. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay, Dylan, you have another one. So, Sonia, give me another one. Um, hold What did you ask? Give, who did I ask? No, what did you ask? I was eating, I'm sorry. Uh, I was asking... Cardiac compromise? How so? Um, I 
shortness of breath can lead to like heart problems. Okay. Okay. Eventually, yes. All right. By not like giving oxygen in the blood. Okay. Uh, inadequate, inadequate uh, external respirations. Okay. Um, Jonathan, give me another one. Um, nasal flaring. Nasal flaring, good. What else? Wheezy. Uh huh. Wheezy. Okay. Tripod position. Tripoding. Um, as far as wheezing goes, uh, can we just put the category of abnormal lung sounds? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Restlessness and anxiety. Why? Because you can't breathe. <laughs> Yeah, respiratory distress, you think about it. <clears throat> and I'm trying to remember if I used this with you guys before. Do you guys like breathing? Yes. Does anybody plan on, on giving it up cold turkey tonight? No. 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 So nobody wants to quit that, like cold no. turkey? No? No. Sure. Hi. Hi. I'm Michaelin. I'm one of the instructors here, so I might be doing stuff with you guys. So if you see me around, that's why. <laughs> She's the second biggest pain in my ass. No, I'm the first, for sure. No, you're nowhere near him. Oh, Paul. I'm just kidding. She has the biggest pain in my butt. No, actually, her, her soon-to-be ex-husband is the biggest pain in my ass. Um, all right, so if you think about it, we like to breathe. And so if anything interferes with our ability to take a good breath, don't we freak out? Anybody started choking on something and all of a sudden you saw your life flash before your eyes? Yes. So you think you're gonna be a little anxious and nervous and freaking out? You know, start sweating and everything, yes. Exactly. So instead of memorizing, because I, I see here there's 15 different things as far as signs and symptoms for respiratory distress. I don't want you to memorize 15 different things. I want you to think about what the person's going to go through. A lot of these, haven't we covered this in the past? Now, somebody had mentioned, did somebody mention the abnormal skin signs? Somebody said cyanosis. Actually, they didn't go follow that. Somebody said cyanosis. What other skin signs are we going to see with them? Shanti? Pale, cool, and clammy. Pale, cool, and clammy. And Jose, you're saying shunting. What does that mean? And why? It means that the body's trying to go ahead and take care of the most important things. Okay, so what happens? How does it shut? Through the skin, the, the nail beds. Or remember, it's the precapillary sphincters, the little valves, muscles, right before the capillaries that will close off that blood vessel, that capillary, not letting any oxygen not, or not letting any blood get into that capillary. So it's keeping it into the core. So. Yeah, I just kind of expanded on what you said, but you're saying it right. All right. So we've we've talked about what happens when somebody's needing that air, that oxygen. Okay. So just process it through. In typical respiratory distress, somebody said tripoding. What's tripoding? Mm. So they're sitting. Usually their hands will be forward. And they're leaning forward. So if you look at the side view, they're leaning forward. And their hands forward. So it looks like a tripod. <clears throat> okay. 
And I think some I think somebody said nasal flaring. What does that mean, and why? Expand, more oxygen. What was that, I'm sorry? The nostrils expand, more oxygen. Okay, why? Those are signs of having, uh, like, not being able to breathe. Correct. Correct. So, I, I couldn't really hear what you are saying about the, the air coming in. To try and get more oxygen? There you go. The nostrils are going to get bigger no, to allow more oxygen. The patient is working hard. To breathe it in. Correct. Well, they're they're breathing. They're working hard to get more air in, but one right. of the ways the body is going to help itself is by making those nostrils bigger to let more air in. Just like your pupils get bigger to get let more light in, your nostrils are going to get bigger to let more oxygen in. Did that make sense? And then abdominal muscles are going to be used, as we talked about earlier, the, the accessory muscles. The abdomen might get involved to help really pull the muscles to expand that chest. Um, there was one more that I thought of that we didn't talk about. I don't think we talked about. Uh, accessory. Oh, seesaw respirations. Which means the chest is rising and then the... The chest falls and the abdomen goes. So you see abdomen and chest doing a seesaw thing. <clears throat> All right. So I'm a smoker, obviously. I'm a smoker. And over time, is that smoke going to affect my lungs? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Okay. Give me a condition that I might develop by smoking. Gum disease. That's not going to affect my breathing. <laughs> All right. So the general uh, lung general, cancer. Yeah. But let's talk about COPD real quick. So COPD is kind of the broad category, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And there's different elements under COPD. So Vanessa mentioned emphysema. So what is happening in emphysema? <sighs> Oh wait, I got the nos I, I got the cannula. No, I'm not sniffing my fingers. This is my, <laughs> my legs are pain. Santana's like, oh my gosh, Lou, you should have gone on vacation. You should have stayed grumpy. <laughs> see, she's smiling, so she's that's what she's thinking. I see it in your look. Damn, you could get a lot of things if you smoke. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Cancer, Cancer head and neck, head lungs, head leukemia, in the stomach, head. kidney, in the pancreas, in your colon, their bladder, in the cervix. So you want to hear <laughs> the bad news? What? That people that don't smoke get the exact same shit. You see? Not bad then. So might as well smoke and be happy. That's one lesson that I learned from my dad last year. No matter how healthy he tried to eat, he still died. His kidney still gave up. But it was another reason. But he still died. He couldn't enjoy food at the end. He had to eat all his food. It had to be uh, pure, uh, pureed. So why not just enjoy life now while you still can? That's the way I look at it. Lesson learned. Thanks, Dad. Love you, Pa. Miss you, Pa. So, somebody talk to me about emphysema. 
on the although it uh, it's a uh, it decreases the surface area the little things they decrease the alveoli yes so okay so the surface area is decreased how's the surface area decreased it loses elasticity okay so what happens so here's an alveoli right so here's the opening up here for oxygen to come in. So oxygen comes in, goes in, and then carbon dioxide goes out. So it's here. However, what happens is now that alveoli expands, loses elasticity, and air, oxygen gets trapped right in here. And carbon dioxide does too. So carbon dioxide is getting trapped. Okay. Hold on real quick, guys. Um, so you'll be back on Wednesday? Yeah, I teach Wednesday night and then I'll, I'll be here. here again Wednesday night. I should be here. Again. Skills with the intermediate class on Saturday? Yeah. You're not going to be here at all? No, I'm working Sierra Blanca. So. Okay. Did I know they're supposed to be here on Saturday? Am I running I scenarios or just skills? I'm sorry? Am I running scenarios or just skills? Actually, no, it's uh, medical scenarios. Oh, okay. They have a scenario book for you to use and crack that whip with them. I'll be in I was telling him that, that the biggest pain in my ass is your soon to be ex husband. Uh, he's gonna break pain in your ass. Okay, I'm out of here. They finally booted me off band, so I'm officially like done with him. I hope. Before I hope I, I get the leads off. Uh, 911 out there. Coming. Let's go. Just put him in their place. Know, right. It's like, get away from my patient. I'll be here Wednesday. Are you here Wednesday night? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'll see you. I like all the room too. I'm like dropping back. All right, cool. Thank you, ma'am. You too. All right, sorry guys. Um. So anyway, so carbon dioxide is getting trapped. So what's happening to that carbon dioxide level? It's building up. Do what? I'm sorry. It's, it's going up. up. It's going up. There you go. It's going up. And so, what do you think the body does? Three more. Exhales more. It retains it. So again, what happens? Is too much of a good thing bad for you? Not unless it's monsters. There's never enough monsters. Wait, let me get my fifth one for today. You knew I wasn't feeling well if I was only drinking two to three a day. But I'm back from break. I feel good. This is my fifth one. That's more normal for me. So what? We're taking a break? No. Not yet. Another 15 minutes. Okay. So I'm waiting for somebody to tell me what happens to the body with all that CO2. Too much of a good thing, or in this case, too much of a bad thing. You go and you get hypox. Um, what is that? What was that one you said where the carbon um, dioxide increases? So the body gets used to a lot of carbon dioxide, and now the carbonic drive is no longer the driving drive, or no longer the drive to breathe. It is now the hypoxic drive. So they retain too much CO2. Their body got acclimated to too much CO2 and it reversed. That's why they need that oxygen. So the portable, the people, the old people that carry the, the portable oxygen with them, they have COPD. Now, when you're assessing me with, with emphysema, what will you know, note about me? You're a smoker? Besides that. Oh. <laughs> upon There's your physical yes. exam. Huh? You're breathing like your nonsense because there's mu mucus in there. Okay. What else? What's my pulse ox going to be? Is it, it's going to run low. It's going to run low. 
Less than 94, right? Yep. What about my chest? It's going to be um, like very minimal chest rise. Like not as much. Not necessarily. What about coughing? Okay, cough a lot. So another condition is chronic bronchitis that falls under COPD. Just there's always junk in the in the bronchioles. One of the one of the key things signs of emphysema is the barrel shaped chest. And your book has a picture of a dude with emphysema. No, it's just a yes. guy with this tripod position. No, yeah, he's on page 508. Oh. Please. Yeah, it's a barrel ch a barrel shaped chest for COPD. Okay. All right. Um, what do you mean barrel chest? What is that? Oh, I don't like. Is it skinny or what? Yeah, they're skinny, and the chest wall is rounded, rounded out. Why is that? Because um, you're losing elasticity within the, the alveoli, so the, the lungs start changing shape um, the, because of the pressures. Uh -huh. The chest looks oh. sunk in. Yeah. Uh, what else? Um, so as you look at the, the signs and symptoms of COPD, is there anything other than what we've already talked about going to be present? What do you mean by that question? I mean that look at the signs and symptoms for COPD or for emphysema. Are there any signs and symptoms? Actually, there's one. But other than that, are there any signs and symptoms that we haven't already talked about? Not really. So the only one is that pink complexion. So emphysema patients, uh, because of the buildup in the O2, there can be pink. And so emphysema is, they call them the pink puffers. Now, the other thing we don't want to see is blood tinge sputum. So the sputum tend to be a little pinkish. That's why I call them pink puffers. Okay. Um, we talked about chronic bronchitis. Um, so as far as emergency treatment, do we uh, 
Um, do we give them oxygen? Yeah. But can you kill a COPD patient by giving them oxygen? Yes. Yes. But you're telling me I can give them oxygen if they're going if they're having an episode. But after a while, they get used to the same oxygen level. So sometimes they get used to not like without oxygen. Okay. So can I give them oxygen? Yes, but no, I don't. I mean, it really not. It just depends, patient, I guess. Well, here's the thing: if you give them oxygen, you can kill them. If you if you give a COPD patient too much oxygen, you will kill them. And the the way you kill them is you shut down the respiratory drive. However, I'm a big butt, aren't I? Uh, however, if they're needing oxygen, they're satting low, right? So 88 to 92, let's go ahead and give them oxygen. The amount of time we have them in pre-hospital care is not significant enough to shut down their respiratory drive. Once they stabilize them at the hospital, they'll start bringing them down, okay? But for our purposes, it's okay, okay? Okay. Um, anything else that we do for, for emergency care? So here I am, I can't breathe, I got a, my cannula. So my two liters by nasal cannula is not doing it for me. So what are you gonna do for me? Breathe for them, BVM? No, uh, unless they're like really, really, really bad, no. Okay. So you're gonna put me on O2, what else? Maybe a CPAP. Good. What is CPAP? It's just like continuously pushing air in, pushing oxygen in. Yeah. Good. Do you have a CPAP or BiPAP? No. Okay. Um. Yeah, CPAP used to be used for snores or people with sleep apnea, uh, but now they found other uses for it. CPAP stands for continuous positive airway pressure. In other words, it's a device, it has a big old mask, and there are some you've seen maybe uh, in movies that there's a little nose piece, it just goes on the nose, and they have a strap or goes around, but it straps right there, and it's pushing air in, continuous positive airway pressure to keep the airways open. Well, now they've adapted it. They have other masks that go around the face and nose. And it's continuously putting pressure or airway pressure inside. And what it does is it keeps the alveoli open. It forces air into the alveoli. And if somebody has like CHF, pulmonary edema, it could actually display some of that fluid, displace some of that fluid and actually allow oxygen to go into that alveoli. Now, a contraindication would be the person's unresponsive. They also have to be breathing though too, so. Okay, all right, so what else? So good, thank you for bringing that up, Ms. Kayla. Means I don't have to talk about it later, yay. Um, so besides the CPAP, besides the oxygen, what else can you do for me? Give me my, 
uh, MDI, my, my meter dose inhaler, or give me an albuterol treatment. If I have lesions in my lungs, you can give me that to help open up my bronchioles. Okay. Questions? So, so far is this helping? Is it is the flow going okay? Yes. Yeah. Too fast, too slow, or just right? No, just right. I think it's good. All right. You see what a break does for me? It does you good. Yeah. I, like take I more, told you take guys. Take more break. Oh, uh, my next break right now is what are we in June? August. I'll probably take a break between you guys. Actually, I won't get a break. You guys get done on Friday with graduation, and then that Monday I, I teach. I start the next uh, night class. Maybe I'll go somewhere. No, actually, you know what? As soon as Ridoso in the Mount Gods opens, I'm there. Although I got an offer from the Cosmopolitan in Vegas, I got a complimentary or uh, two complimentary nights at the Cosmopolitan. So if anybody wants to go, you just got to pay your own airfare. And you need your own gambling money. No, no takers? Okay, darn it. No, I, I do plan on going to Redoso as soon as uh, In the Mount Gods opens. So that might be next month. So, And then after that, that I know of my next trip will be in November. So, ouch. So be thankful I get free rooms at In the Mountain Gods. It's only two and a half hours away. Man, you guys got quiet all of a sudden. Fine, be that way. Uh, be back at um, 8.15. Okay. Sounds good. Um, right. You guys got quiet. You just ignored me. Because we're shy. Baloney. <laughs> <laughs>